Hi folks, welcome to the video on gaseous exchange. This diagram should be familiar to you, it's in your workbooks. Um, gaseous exchange, there's two gases that we're interested in. We are interested in our mate oxygen and our enemy, CO2. Remember, CO2 is a toxin. It is an acid. So if CO2 builds up in your system too much, it's serious trouble okay and um, oxygen is what we need to get in co2 is what we need to get out what you've got in this diagram here is a very very let me just get my pointer a very very basic diagram of an a clump of alveoli so there's a bronchiole as it says there okay and these all round shaped structures are alveoli and these are all capillaries that are wrapped around the alveoli with the blood in them. This is a magnified version of one of those down there. And as we can see, it's the role of oxygen. Remember, you've just taken a big deep breath in. Oxygen has flowed in this way. Oxygen has got to diffuse from the alveoli into the bloodstream. Here's your blood capillary. Here's a blood vessel. And CO2 is going to diffuse from the blood into the alveoli so you can then breathe it out. First of all, let's just start with that. No matter what question they give you on gaseous exchange, please, please, please always put down a definition of diffusion. It's a guaranteed mark. It's an absolute guaranteed mark straight away. Diffusion is the movement of gases from high partial pressures to low partial pressures. What the hell is a partial pressure if you're not already familiar with it? Remember, every mouthful of air that you breathe in is not pure oxygen. It's only about 20, low 20% 20 in terms of oxygen. It's 70% nitrogen. You're also breathing in very slight levels of CO2 and quite a few inert gases as well. But when you breathe that air in, you just extract the oxygen. The, the nitrogen that you breathe in, you breathe straight back out again. Okay? So what we're talking about with the partial pressure, the entire air has air pressure. But when you're talking about the pressure of oxygen within that unit of air, that is a partial pressure. The amount of nitrogen in that air has a partial pressure. So it's just the amount of... We're, talk, we're only interested in oxygen and CO2. So it's the movement of gases from high partial pressures to low partial pressures. Try not to use the word concentrations. For whatever reason, the exam boards have decided that they're not really going to accredit it anymore. So every time you feel tempted to put high concentration, put partial pressure instead. So the alveoli and the blood capillaries that run wrapped around them and next to them are the site of our diffusion. As soon as I take a big deep breath in, oxygen flows into the alveoli. It will then diffuse from the alveoli into the bloodstream. And the, this blood, remember, is the blood that's in the, the capillaries now is the blood that's been around the body. It's picked up all the carbon dioxide and all the nasty toxins. So it's just been to the heart. The heart has pumped it to the lungs. It's full of CO2, it's going to drop off the CO2, it's going to pick up the oxygen, it's going to flow back to the heart, and then the heart is going to give it a big contraction in that left ventricle and send that freshly oxygenated blood around the body to drop off the oxygen. It will then drop it off, pick up the CO2, come back to the heart and lungs, drop off the CO2, pick up the oxygen and go again and go again and go again. And that's the role of the heart and the lungs in the circulatory system. A quick question that sometimes comes up. I'm just going to get rid of all this. How is this here, this system designed to assist diffusion? So how can we assist diffusion? How can we get the most amount of diffusion? Okay. There's three main ways. Okay. Number one, thin membranes, i.e., the alveoli and the capillaries have thin walls. Okay, so that alveoli there 
has a very thin wall. The capillary has a very thin wall, meaning gases can easily diffuse from one into the other. So that's how we can help diffusion. Or that's how the lungs are help, designed to help diffusion uh, in one way. Another one, whoops, a daisy. Another way is a short diffusion distance. Look at the diagram above. The distance between the alveoli and the capillary is nothing. It is next to nothing, okay? So the gases aren't going to diffuse out of one and then struggle to find their way into the other. They're going to diffuse out of one and straight into the other. So we've got a very short diffusion distance. Finally, there are other ways as well. Whoops, sorry, forgot to put my pen on. The other one that I would put is um, that we have um, a large surface area, i.e. there are millions of alveoli in your lungs. You've probably heard this, or you might have read it, there are enough alveoli in your lungs to cover half a tennis court. Well, there are. If you, if you could splat your lungs down and paste the layer out to one alveoli, thick to a one alveoli thick layer you would cover a tennis court i believe it's i believe it's half a tennis court for one lung maybe i've got it wrong but anyway either way it's a big surface area so the fact that you've got millions of alveoli in your lungs means there is a large surface area i.e lots of places for diffusion to take place but other little common ones that you could put down it's moist it's warm and it's damp inside your lungs, therefore, gases prefer to move in areas where it's warm and damp, okay? So the fact that it's a moist atmosphere inside your lungs and the area around your lungs means that diffusion can also take place uh, well there, uh, there as well. And the fact that you always, oops, I keep forgetting my pen, you always maintain, oops, run out of space, maintain a diffusion gradients what in god's green earth does that mean well the reason i left that one to last is because it's where we're going with this you maintain a diffusion gradient okay by by showing what we're about to do next which is what a couple of other questions could be on the exam okay so what we've got here now i hate these terms i think they're overly confusing and it's one of those things that i dread teaching this but you know we've got to know it it could come up on the exam as I put here, gaseous exchange at the lungs, a.k.a. external respiration. Now, external means outside. Now, as you can see here, or maybe not because of my terrible drawing, here's an alveoli and here's a blood capillary, right? So why am I talking about external respiration if I'm inside the lungs? Here's an alveoli, alveolus. Here's a blood capillary. How can this be external respiration? Because according to someone, whoever decided it, we can't talk about internal respiration until oxygen has actually entered your bloodstream. So until oxygen has entered your bloodstream, it is not technically inside you. Even though it might be inside this alveoli, until it's inside this bloodstream, it is not inside you. So gaseous exchange at the lungs is called external respiration because it hasn't technically entered your body yet, even though it's inside of your lungs. Don't have a go at me. I wasn't the one who decided things like this. Okay, so what are we looking at here? You've just taken a big deep breath in, okay, and you have filled your alveoli with oxygen. Nice high levels of O2, okay? Because the oxygen is in a higher partial pressure inside the alveoli, there's more, in other words, there's more oxygen here than there is in the blood. And I'll just quickly um, draw in a few red blood cells, a few haemoglobin. Okay. I know I should be an art teacher as well. Um, because there's more oxygen here than what there is in the bloodstream, the oxygen is going to naturally diffuse from the alveoli into the blood you are not going to get any diffusion going the other way and that's what i said earlier about maintaining 
uh, a diffusion gradient. The fact that you've always got more alveoli in your lungs than in the blood at the site of the lungs means that the oxygen is always going to diffuse in the right direction from the alveoli into the bloodstream. Now, at exactly the same time that that is taking place, as you can see by the arrows pointing in, the red arrows, this blood that is coming back in is carrying CO2. Because this is stuff that's just been picked up from around the body. At exactly the same time that oxygen is diffusing into the bloodstream, CO2 is going to be diffusing out... Oops, it is Out of the bloodstream into the alveoli so that you can then breathe it out okay so quickly O2 diffuses from the alveoli into the blood and as you remember from your vascular stuff 97 to 98% of the oxygen will combine with hemoglobin. 2 to 3% of it will dissolve in the plasma. In the meantime, CO2 will diffuse the total of the way, diffuse from the blood into the alveoli. Okay? And that is what we call gaseous exchange at the lungs, a.k.a. external respiration. Right then, good God, man, what have you drawn? Don't worry, I'll explain it to you, okay? What we've got here is now gaseous exchange at the tissues. Now, what we mean by tissues is muscle, organs, anything like that, okay? Now, again, it's complicated enough as it is without putting these terms in. Because the oxygen is now in the blood, and because we are now talking about diffusion of gases at tissue sites, that is now called internal respiration, things inside my body, okay? It's confusing, but you've just got to make sure you remember that. What I've got here, this white thing here, believe it or not, here's a tendon, and here's the muscle that attaches off it, okay? And here's a tendon on this side. Here's a blood vessel passing through the muscle. If you ever have muscles this size, with a blood vessel going through this size, you are in serious trouble, obviously, okay? That's not the way it works, but it's just a diagrammatic representation and I had to draw it big enough so I could annotate it. So please forgive my appalling artistic skills. This is blood that has just come from the, from the lungs back to the heart. The heart has given it an almighty pump around the body and we've now got to the site of a muscle. This could be a bicep, for example. So this blood has now got Lovely high levels of oxygen in it. Okay. Now remember, it's the muscle tissue that wants the oxygen. The blood is just transport. It doesn't need the oxygen, it's just a transport mechanism. So what is the oxygen going to do at the site of this muscle? It's going to diffuse. from the blood into the muscle tissue, okay? Why, again, because it's in a higher concentration here than what it is in the surrounding muscle tissue. However, this is a muscle. What's it been doing? It's been contracting. What has it produced as a result of that? It's been producing CO2. High levels of carbon dioxide. So the CO2 is now in higher concentrations in the muscle than what it is in the blood. So what is the CO2 going to do at the same time? It's going to diffuse that way into the blood. That blood is then going to flow back to the heart and lungs, drop off the CO2, pick up the oxygen, and the whole process starts again. And again, remember I said earlier that oxygen, when it's in the blood, it's carried by hemoglobin, 97 to 98% of it, 2 to 3% of it in plasma, don't forget your CO2, that gets carried in the blood three ways. Check your textbooks on that. It too can attach onto hemoglobin, and that makes carbamino hemoglobin. It too dissolves into the plasma, okay? So there's a big bonus already. Oxygen and CO2 are carried in the blood in two of the same ways. The only other way that CO2 is carried in the blood 
is as a very weak mild acid called carbonic acid. You've read that in the books, you need to make sure you know it, it can come up as a separate question. Okay, so again, this is all about that maintaining a diffusion gradient again. Um, the CO2 is always going to be in higher concentrations in the muscles than what it is in the blood. So the CO2 will always diffuse from the muscles into the blood. The O2 is always going to be in a higher concentration in the bloodstream than it is in the muscles. So the oxygen will always diffuse from the blood into the muscles. And the hardest thing to get your head around is when it's between the bloodstream or the blood vessels, the capillaries and the muscles, we call that internal respiration. When it's between the alveoli and the bloodstream, and the blood capillaries, that is known as external respiration. So it's making sure you can handle both of those. So to quickly recap, gaseous exchange occurs in two key locations in the body, at the lungs, which is what we call external respiration, and at the muscle tissues and the organ tissues, which is what we call internal respiration. Whenever you get a question on gaseous exchange, always, always, always define the term diffusion. Don't put concentration down anymore, put partial pressures down. So the partial pressures instead of concentration, okay? What you can also mention in questions to do with gaseous exchange is how are the gases transported? So what carries oxygen in the blood? What carries CO2 in the blood? It's always worth putting down because it will get you marks uh, on the questions and the more detail you put down, the more marks you put up. Best of luck with it, folks.